Hi everyone and welcome back to Royan Study Corner where the aim is to make learning as fun, easy and accessible as possible. I am Royan and today we're going to be learning all about prefix and how to express standard units in terms of prefixes. So let's get into it. Every time I say that I feel like a YouTuber but anyway let's get into it. So. If we look at our slideshow here, we see prefixes, which is part of the physical measurements and units. And I'm your teacher, Ryan Warwick. So, just like I said last class, or last video rather, prefixes, not prefixes, physical measurements and units are not explicitly stated in the syllabus but we're still expected to know them so it's sort of the groundwork before we really get into it so what are our learning objectives we only have one learning objective for this class and that is to express standard units using prefixes or their symbols now before we really learn about how to do that we really have to understand what a prefix is so a prefix is something placed before another. So it can be a letter, a word, a number, and you place it before another or in front of another. In language, we learned that we put letters or words at the beginning of another word to change its meaning. So here, one of our examples is you have the word tidy, and you put a prefix, in this case it's two letters, UN in front of that word tiny, tidy, sorry, and you have untidy, and that's the new word. In the same way, we have possible, and if we add the prefix m in front of it, we get impossible. So we're familiar with prefixes in this context, but in physics and in math, it means something slightly different. So here, it changes the unit. So we know we use gram, we, or we can use gram. Gram is a unit of mass. If we put a prefix kilo in front, or kilo, like some people like to say it, then now we have kilogram. So kilo is the prefix. You add it on to the root, in this case, gram, and you have kilogram. Same way, you have meter. Then you have centi as a prefix. And you add that centi in front of meter and now you have centimeter. Now, if we think back to our last session where we learned about fundamental quantity and SI units, we remember that the SI unit for length is meter. Now, if I am originally from Miaro, for those of you who don't know, so of course I had to choose Miaro. If we look at the distance from Miaro to Port of Spain in meters, well, this is along the mantle in our road. But if we look at that in meters, we get the distance being 96,700 meters. Now, this isn't a particularly difficult word or number rather to write, but it can be simplified. If we think back to primary school, because I know we did this for SE, if you think back to primary school, you remember that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So, if we want to convert this 96,700 meters to kilometers, we just divide by 1,000 and we have 96.7 kilometers. Where the K here is the prefix, so we have 96.7 kilometers. It's exactly the same value, but it's just a simpler way of writing it. Another example that I like to use, because since we use a large value just now, let's think of a very small value because prefixes work both ways. It can be used to express very large quantities or very small quantities. If we think of the diameter of an atom or the average in meters, we have this ridiculously tiny number here with nine zeros. At least it's supposed to be nine zeros so we have point zero 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 one meter now 
if we convert that to a simpler unit using a prefix, which in this case is nano, so we convert it to nanometers and we have 0 0.1 nanometer. Now this is a lot simpler to write because you see we only have one zero to write and that's before the decimal point. And this way you're less likely to do things like forget a zero or add an additional zero. So what are these prefixes that we're talking about? I mentioned some already with the kilometers, kilograms, nanometers, but what are all of the prefixes, prefixes that we are going to be studying for CSEC physics? So here we see a table showing us the prefix, like if we spell it out, the symbol of the prefix, which is the shortened form, and the value of the prefix. The first one we have here is mega. Mega is written or represented by a capital M. Now notice that mega is the only one in these here, that is, that uh, an uppercase letter is used. So capital M. Be mindful of that because if you look lower down, you see a lowercase m. And we don't want confusion and wondering what unit it is. So one is uppercase and one is lowercase. So the value of mega is 1 million. And that's it. Kilo, we spell it down. We're familiar with this one. The symbol is common k. And the value of kilo is 1000 meters. What am I saying? 1,000 meters is 1,000. Hecto, which we may not be familiar with, hecto is represented by a lowercase h, and the value is 100. Deca is represented by da, and the value is 10. Now note again that lower down we have the letter d for deci. So we put the A in front of Decker to avoid confusion with two prefixes using the same symbol. After Decker, we have no prefix or unit. Now this is just, I have the 1 as the value here. So this is like if you have meter, there's no prefix in front, so it's just 1 meter. It's not kilometer or centimeter or anything like that. Desi. Desi, which we can can be familiar with with decimal is demonstrated by a lowercase d and the value is 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. Below that we have centi which is denoted by a lowercase c and the value is 0 0.01 or 100 meaning 1 over 100 and this makes sense because um, when we think about the amount of centimeters in a meter or if we think about how a centipede is said to have 100 feet so you see it's 1 over 100 below centi we have milli just like millimeters and we have a lowercase m the value for that is 0 0.001 or 1 over 1000 now if you think about this it's just like it is said that a millipede has 1000 legs know that I said it said that and not that a millipede actually has 1,000 legs. Below milli is micro. You might be familiar with the word microns when people are referring to something very small. Microns has the symbol, it's a Greek letter, mu, which is kind of like a U with a little tail at the front. And micro means one millionth or 0 0.000. 001 or 1 over 1 million and nano the smallest one that we are required to know for csec is just like the one we used before when we were talking about the diameter of an atom is a lowercase n and it's 1 over 1 billion and those are the prefixes that we really have to pay attention to for csec there are smaller ones like pico there are bigger ones like giga and terra but for the purpose of CSEC, these are the ones that we have to focus on. Now, these will not be given to you in an exam. It's not like you have a table or formula sheet with this and they'll tell you just choose the ones that you need. You are expected to remember these things. So if a question may have, and a question won't even come 
with asking you to convert one to the other well it may but it usually doesn't instead it will they'll put a unit in they'll put a value using one unit and they'll tell you express that it's in its SI unit or maybe you have to convert it to calculate and that sort of thing so you are expected to remember what are the values for each of the prefixes what I generally advise my students to do when you're now working on this is to get out an index card or even if you don't have an index card you can get a take a regular sheet of paper write out the table that we just saw here this table or print it if you like whatever floats your boat and keep that in your book like a bookmark so then as you're working through these type of questions you can always refer to it and you'll realize the more you practice questions and the more you use this gradually you tend to remember it a lot more easily but there are other ways that you can use so some people like to use songs and stuff like that this is a way that I like to use where you look at the first letter of the prefix and you come up with something a word using that same first letter and create a sentence that helps you remember all of them so one that I like to use is my you see the M in mega kind for the K in kilo hearted for the H in hecto and it continues just like that so my kind hearted dad understands dogs can make unnecessary noises now notice understands I have the u for unit because that's the one with one so you don't have another value for that so I have no prefix or unit and for micro because we use the little Greek letter mu which looks like a u with a tail I use if you notice at the front of unnecessary rather than a u I have the letter mu and that's a good way to remember it if you like, you can come up with any sort of catchy sentence that you like that helps you remember. remember. The aim is for you to be able to remember. So if you have a particular one that you like to use, you can stick with that. Let's work on some examples to see how to convert from one unit to another. There are many different ways that you can use to convert it. Some people use a particular table to see how many zeros. Some people say... Um, if you're going bigger to smaller or smaller to bigger, then you have to learn to divide or multiply. That's the way I learned it in school. But I've noticed that when I started teaching, that way of understanding if something is getting bigger, if something is getting smaller, if to divide or multiply, I noticed that a lot of students have problems remembering and understanding which direction to move in. So for that purpose, I'll be using another method which I think is easier because you don't have to think about if you have to multiply if you have to divide because it's the same procedure regardless of what unit you're converting to and what unit you're converting from if you feel more comfortable with the way that you're using right now stick with that please my intent is not to get you to change from that but it's really just to try to get everyone to understand how to work out the question so our first question here is convert seven millimeters to centimeters so let me put this here convert seven millimeters to centimeters now excuse my handwriting because my handwriting is a little bit crap of it um what we're really trying to figure out here is how many centimeters there are in seven millimeter seven millimeters sorry so it's essentially like dividing because you're trying to find out how many of one unit there in another so you're trying to find how many centimeters are in seven millimeters just like usually when we're doing things let's try to find for one and then we could try to find for seven so let's say we're converting one millimeter to centimeters and since we said it's like trying to find how many centimeters are in one millimeter we can think of it as dividing we can say to find how many centimeters this is we have one millimeter divided by centimeters now the way that I like to do this is to put the value for each of them so by converting from millimeters to centimeters 
if we look back at our table here the value for millimeter is 1 over 1000 and if we look at the value for centimeter on the table we will find 1 over 100 now I know we have our calculators and exams but for the sake of being thorough with fractions because they are fraction questions and like number one and stuff I'll work through the fraction question manually so we have if we're dividing fractions then what do you do you change the sign to multiplication and you flip the second fraction so we have 1 over 1000 multiplied by 100 over 1 and we see that we can simplify things here so if we cancel these two zeros and we cancel these two zeros we have 1 over 10 or 1 tenth which means that one millimeter is equal to one tenth of a centimeter now we found for one so let's find for seven so if one millimeter is equal to one over ten centimeters then seven millimeters will be equal to seven multiplied by one over ten now if you're one of those who forgets if 7 is a numerator or denominator just remember it's a whole number so it's 7 over 1 so you say 7 ones are 7 1 by 10 is 10 so you have 7 over 10 centimeters or if you want to convert it to a decimal at the end here we know when you're dividing by 10 you just move the point one place to the left so you have 0 0.7 centimeters so what this means is that 7 millimeters is equal to 0 0.7 centimeters. Now, let's work out the same question, but rather than using fractions, using decimals. Convert 7 millimeters to centimeters. Now, again, this can be thought of by saying how many centimeters are there in seven millimeters so we're going to take for one first and then we'll find for seven one millimeter is equal to how many centimeters and as i said we think of it as division so we're trying to find one millimeter divided by centimeters if now we look back on the table to find the values for both of them. Decimal form. One millimeter can be written as 0 0.001 and centimeter is written as 0 0.01. Now, let's plug this into our calculator. We have 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.01 and the answer is 0 0.1 now what does this mean this means that one millimeter is equal to 0 0.1 centimeters so if we have for one then what do we do we can't forget about the seven now we have to find for seven so seven millimeters is equal to 7 multiplied by 0 0.1 which gives us 0 0.7 centimeters so 7 millimeters I don't know what is that I just wrote is equal to 0 0.7 centimeters and that's it so you can choose which you prefer to work in fractions or decimals both of them are easy to punch into your calculator but sometimes Intuitively, some people prefer to look in fractions, while some people prefer to look in decimals. So it really is up to you. Next example says, convert 4,000 micronewtons to newtons. Now, 
don't get worried about what this n is newtons is just another unit that you would use exactly the same way if you remember in form 3 newtons is the unit for force but don't worry about it because when we reach forces we're going to be going over that so 4000 micronewtons to newtons remember we think of this as division because we're trying to find how many newtons are in 4000 micronewtons first things first let's drop the 4000 and find for one so one micro newton is equal to how many newtons and we said it's like dividing so we're going to say one micro newton divided by newtons if we look back to our table we will see the value for micro and I'm going to just work out the other examples in decimal, decimals um, but I said as I said it's completely up to you which you choose to do so the value for microns is 1 million which means 0 0.5 zeros and 1 over Newton notice it doesn't have a prefix in front of it so if it's no prefix it's unit which means the value is just 1 And we know anything over 1 is the same number. So essentially it means that 1 micronewton is equal to 0 0.501 newtons. So now we know for 1 micronewton. How do we find now for 4000 micronewtons? So if 1 is equal to this, then 4,000 micronewtons will be equal to 4,000 multiplied by 0 0.000001. Now let's plug that into our calculator. We have 4,000 multiplied by 0 0.12345. 1 equals to 0 0.004 newtons and that's the answer what you can do is each question that i work out as a decimal only you can go over it and work it out as a fraction and our next and final example is let's see 3,456 watts is equal to how many megawatts? Now again, don't get worried about watts. Watts is just another unit, just like everything else, and we'll come across watts later on. Watts is the unit for power. So, we're trying to see how many megawatts are in 3,456 watts. We think of it like division. But before that, we remove that number, the 3,456, because we want to find for one foot. So we're trying to see if you have one watt, how many megawatts does that equal to? Now we jump into our division. So we have one watt divided by megawatts. Now let's jump back to our table. And if we look here, watt doesn't have a prefix in front of it. So, it's just no prefix or unit, which is 1. And mega, if we look at that, we have 1 million. Now, you can leave this as a fraction if you like. Or, you can put it as a decimal. At this point, I really should just write that. But we punch it in our calculators. 1 divided by 1 million, which is six zeros so don't mix that up is equal to 0 0.345 and that's it so what does this mean this means that one watt is equal to 0 0.5 zeros megawatt but we don't just want to find for one we want to find for three thousand 456 so 3 4 5 6 
watts will be equal to 3, 4, 5, 6. I now realize I made up this question with the numbers 3, 4, 5, 6. And I keep forgetting and have to look back every time for the number. So multiplied by 0 point and we have our five zeros and we're going to plug this into our calculator again we have three four five six look at when i remembered multiplied by zero point of five zeros and one that gives us zero point zero zero three four five six megawatts. So 3456 watts is equal to 0 0.003456 megawatts. And as I said before, you can work these out any way that you like. If you prefer working them out as a fraction, you can do that as well. Whatever works for you, as long as you understand, that's the important thing. So we worked out our four questions and now I would advise you to try these four questions on your own and that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this video and found this helpful look out for the next video which is where we'll be going on to see more about prefixes and converting other types of prefixes because that is not all for prefixes so thanks again for watching see you all next time be safe and be kind to yourselves